Let me guess. Right now, you have a connection with a certain someone, and it's getting stronger than what you first imagined it to be. You're feeling things that are unprecedented and unfamiliar. But the most confusing part is that you have these kinds of feelings for someone unexpected. As Christians, we know that all things happen for a reason. We must follow God at any time and place in our lives. Every good, pleasing, and godly thing comes from above. And even if this unexpected affection situation doesn't look that way, you're given the grace and wisdom to turn things around until it does. I'm telling you this because, as declared in Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. We highlight here that his power is constantly at work within us. Every second we're fulfilling the purpose God's designated for us. We are his instruments 24-7. If you find yourself suddenly caring about someone and being brought closer to them, just know that it's Christ acting for a very good reason. In Matthew 22:14, I read, For many are called, but few are chosen. Everything might be confusing at the moment, yes, but whatever's happening is an invitation from the Lord. Out of all the people He could have picked, you and this person are the ones He called. Imagine the honor that's been bestowed upon you. But before you respond, here are the possible reasons why God allowed this particular connection with someone. Firstly, this connection definitely means that God sees a promising potential in your relationship and He wants you to explore this further. You might be expecting me to talk about marriage and spouses here, and I will in a bit, but let me tell you about the kind of potential that is not necessarily romantic at first. Hebrews 10.24 says, Let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works. I'll take this chance to gently remind you that God prepared us to carry out this task. At the very least, your situation now isn't any different. Think of how magnets are used in machines. Aren't they designed to attract certain types of materials, only so that they function well together for a greater purpose? This is the kind of perspective we must first acknowledge to make room for deeper understanding. Our role in this world is not necessarily to attract or connect with every single one of our brothers and sisters in Christ, but rather to be open to the ones we're personally called to care for by God. Ruth and Boaz, for example, were initially brought together because they realized that they served as solutions to their problems. Ruth needed an heir for her mother-in-law's benefit, while Boaz, since he was related to Naomi's late husband, wanted to redeem Ruth so that their lineage continued. This is usually the introductory event to finding your chosen spouse, being in a situation that constitutes concern and friendship prior to being in love. The main idea you should hold on to is that this connection has the potential to serve both your interests and needs before God reveals His ultimate plan. One of you may need support that only the other one can provide best, or God may have foreseen that you make an exceptional team. If we're being specific, 1 Peter 5.7 asks us to cast our anxiety to Jesus because He cares for us. This gives us the message that caring is a qualifying trait that one must possess before someone else can trust them with their problems. Now, God allowing you to care for someone deeply is a strong sign that this person needs you, and vice versa. Honestly, one may never realize that they need companionship until a worthy companion finally comes along. Bear in mind as well that when God blesses us, He always uses someone to bear His gift. Have you noticed this? If so, it's an even better reason to welcome such affection for another person. There's no reason to fear new relationships, for it gives us the opportunity to learn more about ourselves, our siblings in Christ, and God Himself. Like I said earlier, you're more than capable of shaping this connection into something holy and pleasing to our Creator. If you just give yourself the chance to tap into the potential of this blessing, then you're fulfilling your purpose as God's instrument. He's already nudging you to participate in this blossoming partnership because He's planning to use the two of you for something wonderful. This is something you can be certain of, my friend. Let's delve into a larger reason that might be in play. Just like the story of Ruth and Boaz, there is a great possibility that you're experiencing this 
as God has already introduced you to your future spouse. The Bible tells us a story that perfectly illustrates this. When Abraham's servant went to Rebekah's home and asked for her hand in marriage on behalf of Isaac, the family agreed, although they were a bit hesitant. Rebekah, on the other hand, had complete faith and confidence in what was to come. She left her birthplace, family, and friends to marry a man she knew nothing about. For some unexplainable reason, Rebekah cared enough about Isaac and the future of that sacred relationship. As specifically told in the Bible, Isaac loved Rebekah deeply. This is what happens when you open your heart to who God is bringing to you. You may not feel it fervently at the moment, but the Lord is likely preparing you to fall in love with each other. However, a partnership that is orchestrated by God does not work like a love potion. Instead, He leads you to each other and gives you opportunities to bond and learn what makes each other worth caring for. You'll naturally learn to fall into each other's arms and not let go, for it's God's will to put you together. Colossians 3.14 says, And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Love is discovered once you're as close as best friends, as this is what a true marriage should be, friends who deeply care about each other. If this person shares the same values and beliefs as you, and God's allowing you to care more than just a friend, then you might be witnessing your own love story unfold. There is one more problem people like you might have, though. What if you feel this way even if you can't see this person romantically? What if you don't want to pursue a deeper relationship with them? This I know from 1 Corinthians 2.9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. It's valid and understandable that this is your present outlook, but know that all God asks is you to let Him take the wheel and reveal His plans at His own timing. Even if you're in no way interested in this person, you have to trust that there's a bigger picture. You have to believe that you're given the chance to engage in a connection that can mutually benefit both of you. Proverbs 10.12 reminds us that hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Love will eventually outweigh the anxiety, doubts, or worries you have now, should this be the person God has chosen as your spouse. The least you can do is make the most out of every encounter God arranges for the two of you. Talk to each other, go out, and just see where this leads to. As long as the Lord is in control, He'll take you to a destination you would never have dreamed of. The truth is that you have no idea who this person might be in your life. There are people who meet each other and become acquaintances, but they fall in love only after an absurdly long period of time. Again, that's because God works with an interesting time frame. Relationships evolve unexpectedly and come in different shapes and sizes, and that is a beautiful thing that we're privileged to experience in this lifetime. Free yourself from all expectations. If God puts concern in your heart for this person, then so be it. If you're being guided on a path towards this person, then walk with confidence. What could go wrong when both of you are merely heeding God's instructions? As they say, what you're looking for comes when you're not looking at all. What if pursuing a connection with this person can give you something valuable? Nobody would want to miss this chance. We read in 1 Corinthians 3, 7, So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who causes the growth. We're merely tools until God selects us to partake in a meaningful event. We are clueless individuals until God chooses to mobilize a couple and lead them to each other. In this case, right from the moment you felt this sudden yet unwavering affection, you are one of the few He selected. It's truly all about perspective. My brothers and sisters in Christ, my advice is that you don't resist the force of God in your love life. Mark 10, 9 tells us, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. The two of you are being brought together by the Father Almighty. Let His Holy Spirit sweep you off your feet and embark on this promising connection. I promise you, at the end of all this, you'll come out a hundred times more blessed. 
as well as a remarkable blessing to this specific person. Is there someone in particular whom you have intentionally avoided lately? Perhaps this is a person who openly admires you or even someone who you feel is attracted to you. I have no idea what your circumstances are with this person, and if we're being really honest, a situation like this doesn't have a one-size-fits-all kind of solution. What I'm inclined to tell you, however, is the reality on the other side of the coin. If you had truly decided to push this person away, you would not even bother to listen to all of this. The fact that you're seeking this message suggests that God is asking you to hear this out. Have you ever played with Legos or building blocks? You purchase a set based on the model you prefer, and when you open it, all the blocks and accessories are in shambles. There's no way you can build this item correctly unless you closely follow the instructions. Sure, you can randomly stack blocks on top of each other, but by doing this, you're not honoring the purpose of the design. When God sends a person your way, you are honestly as clueless as a kid without an instruction manual on hand. You have a hundred possible ways of treating this person, but without heeding God's instructions, you can never be sure of the role they are intended to play in your life. Micah 6.8 says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. When you push someone away despite the Lord's effort in connecting the two of you, you're telling him, No, God, I don't need this person. Isn't this a statement of pride, contradicting his command to be just and humble? It's an explicit expression of impatience as you've already labeled this person unnecessary when God wants you to figure out the blessing that this person is about to bring. The truth is, everything he brings you is everything that you need. In a pack of blocks or puzzles, they won't give out a piece that's not needed. In the same way, only our Creator knows what and who we'll need. This is exactly why there is a force pulling the two of you together. Pushing a person away means that they are continuously being pulled toward you in the first place. Don't you think that this correlates to the fact that God actively works both within and around us? He ensures that everything and everyone are right where they're supposed to be. Clearly, you're meant to be in close proximity with this person. What is so troubling about this? You might say that you're pulling away because this is not how you envision things to be. So what else do you expect from the God of the unexpected? Life and love are two things that cannot exist without the other. And what makes both so beautiful is all the surprises they hold. It's all about the twists and turns we take along the way that lead us to the grandest, unimaginable destinations. I know you might be surprised that your soulmate has been introduced to you at this point in your life. But don't let this hinder you from responding to God's invitation to the relationship you are worthy of. The problem is, most of the time, we can't recognize what's meant for us even when it's right in front of us. The relationship you have been praying for will not reveal itself like magic. It's often like treasure that is buried deep and securely. However, some may find they are not ready to open this chest yet. This is an inner struggle we can face. We have tendencies to avoid intimacy and trusting people, mostly because of experiences that have scarred us in the past. These factors trigger our flight or fight response, which might have led you to continuously put distance between yourself and this person. Moreover, we often fall victim to the notion that we know what and who is best for us. This is something we need to let go of. We read in Jeremiah 17.9 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Pushing people away does not necessarily make you a brave person. It only shows that you are afraid to be vulnerable. Sabotaging a potentially loving relationship is a sign that your heart may not be at its healthiest state. The hard truth is that we let our emotions get the best of us. Our hearts allow us to perceive what we want to perceive, because deceiving ourselves is often more gratifying than seeing the real thing. 
You'd rather isolate yourself than believe that this person is your soulmate because of the fear your heart holds. Let me remind you that God's power is made perfect in our weakness. His grace embraces us so that we won't be encouraged to walk away from what scares us. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. If your heart is closed and unwilling to accommodate someone sent by God, then what kind of love or goodness can enter and flow from it? No matter how hard you push, they're never going away. I want you to know that meeting your soulmate was never guaranteed to be easy. Once you've crossed paths, the connection is bound to be lasting and unwavering. You cannot escape what God has willed for you and your soulmate. Jonah, if you remember, was meant to go to Nineveh. He declined this instruction from God because Jonah held on to his personal belief that the people in this city were not worthy of God's forgiveness. So he tried to go to the farthest place possible and boarded a boat. Long story short, God used a big fish to swallow him to save Jonah from drowning. Then the Lord had the fish spit him out onto dry land so that he may once again instruct Jonah to obey his command. The thing is, just like Jonah unfairly judged the people of Nineveh, who are you to claim that this person is not worthy of a chance? If God is consistently bringing this person closer to you, it means that they are worth your time and energy. It's never good to second guess the Lord's decisions. Sure, driving this person away from you may affirm your beliefs, calm your anxiety, or give you a sense of protection. But at the end of the day, you may just be dragging yourself away from God's presence. You might be unnecessarily preventing yourself from experiencing love and happiness. You shouldn't wait for God to reprimand you as he did Jonah before you realize that his will is immovable and for the best. Proverbs 19.21 reminds us that many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. The point of all this is not necessarily to ask you to step forward. You're not quite ready to open your heart to them yet. That's all right. All you need to do now is stop resisting, stay still, and just be open to the possibility. In Proverbs 23.26, God declares, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. Again, brothers and sisters, give your heart to God so that he may prepare you to offer it to your soulmate next. I hope this makes sense. Minister John Newton once said, God works powerfully, but for the most part, gently and gradually. By staying still, you give God the opportunity to work on you and this relationship little by little. Slowly but surely, God is enriching your soul with wisdom so that you may discover the reason why he anointed this person as your lifelong partner. Proverbs 19.8 says, He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. You may not want anything to do with this person now, but as time goes by, you might gain a deeper understanding of why they are the one the Lord is putting in your heart. It's kind of like how your hairdresser asks you to stay still so they can cut your hair as effectively as possible. Let the Holy Spirit be the only one in motion, especially at times like this, where you have no clue what is about to come. After all, the way we perceive people evolves over time. The person you didn't find attractive at first might become the most attractive person to you after a year. The admirer who failed to meet your standards at the very beginning might even exceed your expectations once you get to know them. Remember that we are malleable souls because God is continuously changing us. Spending time with your soulmate might help you become more compatible because by doing so, you're allowing yourself to explore each other's identities. Don't put this person in a box. Let them prove themselves to you. Hebrews 10.36 tells us that you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. You need to make an effort to be curious and full of hope instead of shooting down the chance of what could be with the best love story you have ever dreamed of. The Lord promised you a relationship with a person who will love you unconditionally. 
know that he will indeed guide you in this direction if you open your heart to the person he sent you. Let your prayer be patterned in the scripture in Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. A pure heart can never let you down. Because its devotion belongs only to the Lord, this person was handpicked by God to be your future partner. And His chosen time to open this chapter of your life is now. What is love? Love is a powerful feeling of connection and affection, sometimes coming powerfully and suddenly. It's a fleeting sense of care and fondness. It's also a decision to dedicate yourself to supporting, respecting and looking after someone. True love is when both partners appreciate each other and respect each other's individuality and thoughts. They listen to each other and consider each other's needs and opinions. When there's true love between a couple, nothing can come between them. My dear, when a man truly loves a woman, he'll show it through his actions. And when a woman desires and loves a man, she'll do the same. This reminds me of a verse from Song of Solomon 3-4. Scarcely I had passed them when I had found the one my heart loves. I held him and would not let go till I had brought him to my mother's house, to the room of the one who conceived me. So does this mean that if a man doesn't say all the right words, he doesn't love you? Definitely not. A man expresses his love through his actions, not just his words. His actions are a reflection of his love for you not the cause of it. It's crucial to grasp this concept because men and women think and behave differently. It's important not to make assumptions about a man based on how you, as a woman, might feel. Instead, seek to understand how men approach things and use that insight to relate to your partner. And today, we're going to explore some signs that a man truly loves you. When a man loves you, he may say certain things to you. You might hear some or all of them. And when you do, know that you are truly loved. Our prayer is that this message will help you understand yourself and your partner so that you can navigate your relationship with wisdom and peace. Number one, I trust you completely. Listen, this is one of the greatest things a man can say to you. In simple terms, it means I love you. Why? Because men don't express emotions like women. They think logically and rationally. They don't easily trust. They assess and evaluate. So when a man can look at you, flaws and all, and say he trusts you, then you've won his love. A man like this will stand by you and rely on you. Moreover, when a man tells his partner that he trusts her completely, it means he believes she'll stand by him through any storms or challenges. As 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. My dear friend, when a woman is patient with a man and shares his struggles, she's ready for a lasting relationship. This makes the man love her unconditionally, knowing that she believes in him and listens when he needs to talk. The scripture further explains in verses 7 and 8 that it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it'll pass away. For instance, if a man loses his job, he feels confident that you won't abandon him. Why? Because he knows that your love for each other is real. He believes you'll stand by him, no matter the challenges or circumstances he faces. Number two, you complete me. You complete me is a powerful statement. When a man tells a woman that she completes him, it shows deep love. Even the Bible says, and the two shall become one. What does it mean for a man to say you complete him? It means he sees you in everything he thinks and lacks in himself. In a relationship, each partner has a role. If one falters, the other should be ready to help. True love is shown through the actions of both partners. When you find the one that's meant for you, you'll see his sincerity. Without him, it feels like something is missing. 
He brings completeness because of your deep love for Him. God understands this, which is why He brings that person into your life to fulfill you. It's not just your feelings. It's God's Spirit speaking through you. Ecclesiastes 4, 9-10 explains the meaning of these words better. It says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Number 3. I'm here for you. When a man looks you in the eyes and tells you, I'm here for you. It's not just a string of words. It's a declaration from the depths of his heart. It's a testament to the love he feels, genuine and unwavering. He's not just saying it to impress or manipulate you. No, he's saying it because he can't imagine a world without you in it. You're not just a part of his life. You're the very essence that fills it with meaning. When he utters those words, it's not just expressing affection. He's committing to your well-being. He wants to shield you from harm, to walk alongside you through life's twists and turns. It's not about control or possession. It's about genuine care and devotion. So when he assures you that he's there for you, believe him. It's not just a promise. It's a pledge of love sealed with sincerity. Hold on to him. Cherish him. For a love like this is rare and precious. And as you journey forward together, trust that with Him by your side and faith in the divine, your future will be nothing short of extraordinary. Number four, I cherish you because you are special. What truly sets you apart in the eyes of someone who loves you? It's not your appearance or what they gain from being with you. Think about the unconditional love of the divine. It doesn't stem from our worthiness. Rather, it's God's love that gives us value. He sees us as special, even in our most ordinary moments. That's the essence of being cherished by your beloved. Remember, you're not loved because you're special. You're special because you're loved. Let's delve deeper into this. When a man is deeply enamored with you, his love will compel him to recognize your individuality and uniqueness. Perhaps it's your upbringing, your principles, or your values that captivate him. He may have encountered others who lack the qualities that make you who you are. For instance, consider a woman in a relationship who believes it's all about give and take. A man will have a challenge settling with such a woman. In relationships, many men desire a partner who embodies humility. When he sees this quality in you, he treasures it, fostering a deeper love and appreciation for who you are. Number five, you inspire me to be a better person. One of the most powerful expressions of love from a man is when he tells you that you inspire him to be a better person. It's not just a casual compliment. It's a profound acknowledgement of the impact you've had in his life. Since meeting you, he's undergone a transformation, realizing that he's become a better version of himself, all thanks to you. You've become his source of accountability his driving force towards self-improvement. See how Hebrews 10, 2 to 25 puts it. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. You've exemplified this in his life, guiding him towards a deeper understanding of genuine love and drawing him closer to his faith. Men may not always vocalize it, but they deeply appreciate a partner who challenges them to grow. Someone who believes in their potential, who cheers them on to pursue their dreams and aspirations. Knowing that your significant other is your biggest supporter is an incredible feeling. In moments when he doubted the existence of true love, you've shown him its power. When he tells you that you inspire him to be better, it's more than just words. It's a testament of his love for you and his commitment to building a future together. Number six, tell me your needs. When a man tells you he's always there for you, urging you to share your needs, it's a declaration of his love. His deep affection compels him to stand by your side, protecting you 
and ensuring your comfort in the relationship. His actions speak volumes, carving out time and space to demonstrate his unwavering support through both the highs and the lows. Your happiness is his happiness, and your sadness weighs heavily on his heart. He longs to be your safe haven, your refuge in times of need. So he implores you to communicate your needs, to allow him the privilege of becoming your protector and caretaker. Number seven, I wanna spend my life with you. When a man professes, I wanna spend my life with you, it's not just a statement, it's a pledge of commitment and devotion. His love for you transcends mere words. It's a bond that binds him to you for eternity. He forsakes all other options because he sees you as his one and only, unwilling to risk losing you to another. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Similarly, he desires to spend his life with you because he recognizes the inherent value and uniqueness you bring to the relationship. Remember, dear child of God, love is more than just spoken words. It's manifested through consistent actions of commitment, care, and respect. Trust in the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead you to a love that'll enrich your life and fill your relationship with love, hope, and grace. Consider the moments when you find yourself irresistibly drawn to someone. It's not just a surface level intrigue, but a deeper, soulful pull. This feeling is more than just a passing fancy. It's a gentle whisper from your heart, seeking to explore a bond that might have been orchestrated by higher powers. In Proverbs 19.21, it's said, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. This verse reminds us that sometimes our deepest attractions might be part of a greater plan. Now, it's essential to differentiate this divine pull from mere human infatuation. While the latter is fleeting, the former has a purity and persistence that aligns with God's love and teachings. This connection is not about obsession, but a mutual, respectful interest that honors both individuals' values and beliefs. Have you ever found yourself pondering over someone, and at the same time, sensed a unique closeness to them? Perhaps this person finds reasons to be near you, or you stumble upon each other in unexpected places. These occurrences are not mere coincidences, but could be signs of a deeper connection. As Matthew 18.20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. This scripture might suggest that when two souls are drawn together in purity and faith, they are in tune with God's plan. When you feel this connection, you might ask yourself several questions. Is this the feeling of love as God intended? Could this be the soulmate that complements your faith journey? It's crucial to approach these questions with prayer and reflection, seeking guidance from God to understand the true nature of your feelings. Remember, a connection that is constantly on your mind, yet honors God's teachings, is unique. It's a bond that goes beyond the physical realm, touching the spiritual, it's not about finding someone perfect, but about discovering a companion who shares your journey towards faith and growth. Number one, they remember important dates, they work hard for you, and put you right when you are departing from God. Amidst the hustle and bustle of daily life, someone special remembers your birthday, the anniversary of when you first met, or even the day you were baptized. This isn't just a mere coincidence or a sign of a good memory. It's a reflection of their heart's priorities. In Proverbs 27, 9, it says, As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. When someone cherishes you deeply, these dates become etched in their heart, resonating with their spirit. It's not about the capacity to remember dates. We all forget things, even important ones. But when someone is constantly thinking of you, these dates transform from mere numbers on a calendar to significant milestones, celebrated and honored. This remembrance is a way of honoring not just the day, but you as a person, recognizing God's hand in bringing you into their life. Consider your own experiences. 
Can you recall every birthday of each friend or family member? Likely not, but there's a high chance you remember the birthday of someone you deeply care for. It's the same when someone is thinking of you. Your special days become landmarks in their journey of affection. But it's not just about remembering dates. It's about the effort and intention behind it. They might go out of their way to make these days special, to show you in tangible ways how much they value and respect you. This is beautifully aligned with 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, which teaches us that love is patient, kind, and always protective. By remembering and honoring your important dates, they are not only showing love, but also respect for what those moments mean in your life and faith. Moreover, this remembrance is a reflection of their desire to align with you spiritually. When someone corrects you gently, steering you back towards God's path, it's a profound indication of their care and thoughtfulness. Proverbs 27.17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Their attentiveness to your spiritual well-being demonstrates a deep-seated respect and love for you, grounded in faith. In a world where we are often distracted and forgetful, finding someone who remembers not just your special days, but also your spiritual path is a treasure. It's a subtle yet powerful reminder that you are, that you are constantly in their thoughts, prayers, and heart. Let this be a beacon of hope and a testament to the kind of godly love that nurtures, respects, and grows in the light of Christ's teachings. Number two, they mirror your actions they don't take away but amplify your relationship with God. Reflecting on the many ways we navigate the tides of relationships, there's a particular behavior that stands as a profound testament to someone's deep consideration for us. It's a behavior rooted in the essence of connection and admiration, often unnoticed yet profoundly impactful. This trait, a subtle yet powerful signal, is the act of mirroring Imagine walking alongside someone whose heart aligns so closely with yours that they begin to reflect your very essence. It's not just about adopting your choice of words or phrases. It's a deeper resonance where they echo your humor, your style, and your way of being. This phenomenon, known as mirroring, isn't a mere imitation. It's a form of unspoken admiration, a silent language of affection. Consider the times you've shared a laugh with someone and you find them echoing your unique sense of humor, or when you express their thoughts and they resonate so deeply that they begin to embrace your perspectives, even in the most subtle ways. This isn't about losing individuality. It's about finding a shared rhythm, a harmonious dance of personalities that enhances, not diminishes, our connection with God. The Bible speaks of unity and mutual edification in relationships, in a relationship where mirroring occurs, there's a beautiful alignment of souls, each enhancing the other's journey towards God and wisdom. This mirroring goes beyond mere words. It's in the attentive gaze that lingers a moment longer, a gaze that says, you matter, your words matter. It's in the small details they remember, your likes, your dislikes, the tiny quirks that make you uniquely you. It's as if they made it their mission to understand and cherish your essence. In a world where authenticity is treasured, some might mistake this mirroring for insincerity. But look closer and see it's a genuine expression of admiration and care. It's about someone valuing your influence so much that it becomes part of who they are. It's a way of saying, I see you, I appreciate you, and I am here with you. When someone mirrors you in this way, it's a sign they hold you in their thoughts often, a reflection of their desire to build a connection that transcends the ordinary, a connection that nurtures both your souls. This isn't just about romantic relationships. It's about any bond where mutual respect and admiration are the foundations. So next time you notice someone reflecting your mannerisms, your style, or your way of speaking, take a moment to appreciate the depth of their regard for you. It's a sign of a bond that's not just about the surface interactions, but about a deeper, more meaningful connection. A connection that, in its own unique way, brings us closer to the love and understanding we all seek in our walk with God. Number three, 
the art of thoughtful gifting. The Bible teaches us, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9.7 This verse captures the essence of giving in love. It's about the joy and thoughtfulness behind the gift, not its material value. Imagine a scenario where you mentioned your love for early morning walks. One day, you find a small package at your doorstep, a pair of comfortable walking shoes. It's not just a pair of shoes. It's a symbol of someone listening to you, remembering the details, and acting on them to bring joy to your life. This gesture is a powerful indicator that you occupy a special space in their thoughts. Thoughtful gifting is a testament to the giver's attentiveness to your likes, dislikes, and even those small details you mentioned casually. It's a reflection of Proverbs 27.9. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Just as fragrance adds beauty to our lives, a well-thought-out gift adds warmth to our relationships. When someone gives you something that aligns with your interests, it's not just about the object itself. It's about them taking the time and effort to understand you deeply. For instance, if you're an animal enthusiast, receiving a gift related to animals isn't just about the item. It's about the person showing they value your passions and interests. Moreover, the act of giving in a relationship is not a one-way street. It's about building a mutual connection, a shared understanding that elevates the relationship to a spiritual and emotional depth. In Ephesians 4.32, we are reminded, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This kindness and compassion are vividly expressed through thoughtful gestures. In summary, the gifts we choose for someone special are more than just items. They are expressions of our understanding, care, and affection. They are tangible representations of the thoughts and feelings we carry in our hearts for that person. As Christians, let's cherish and practice this beautiful act of giving, remembering that it's a reflection of God's love and generosity towards us. Keep an eye out for these subtle yet significant signs in your Christian dating journey, for they often speak the language of love louder than words. In our world today, it's not uncommon to hear stories of people who meet their spouse and instantly recognize them as the one they want to spend the rest of their lives with. This kind of connection can be truly amazing and a testament to the power of love. However, not everyone has this experience. There are cases where individuals develop feelings for someone, hoping that they're God sent, only to realize later on that they're not meant to be together. This can be a source of confusion and disappointment it's important to remember that God is in control of our lives, including our relationships. Even when things don't go according to our plans, we can find solace in the fact that God is always working behind the scenes. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it is written, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. This verse reminds us that even when we're faced with confusion or uncertainty, God is there to bring peace and order into our lives. Friend, sometimes God allows confusion and uncertainty to enter our relationships because He has a greater plan in store for us. He may be using these experiences to shape us, teach us valuable lessons, or redirect us towards the person who's truly meant for us. Trusting in God's plan can help us navigate through the uncertainty and find comfort in His guidance. Remember, God knows everything that concerns us. He's the creator of our lives, and there's nothing that escapes His attention. So if you find yourself in a situation where you have feelings for someone, but doubts start creeping in, remember that God's aware of what you're going through. He allows these feelings to arise for a reason, and He will guide you towards the path that's best for you. As children of God, it's essential for our lives to align with God's will and purpose. When it comes to relationships, seeking and following God's will is crucial for experiencing a fulfilling and blissful partnership. It's important to understand that God loves and cares for each of us deeply. He desires the best for us 
and would never force us into marrying someone who we didn't have a genuine affection for or who does not align with our lives and values. God's role in our lives is to guide and direct us towards the right person, preventing us from making wrong choices. His wisdom and perfect understanding surpass our own limited understanding. We can find comfort in knowing that He sees the bigger picture and knows what's truly best for us. Proverbs 3, 5-6 encourages us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. It urges us to submit to Him in all areas of our lives, including our relationships. By placing our trust in God and seeking His guidance, He promises to make our path straight. Now, let us explore some reasons why confusion may arise when we meet someone we love, even though there's a deep connection. 1. We doubt if it's God's plan. When we come into contact with the person we deem to be the man or woman of our dreams, it's natural for doubts to creep in. We may find ourselves questioning whether they're truly God-sent because of the situation around us. However, it's important to remember that our uniqueness and experiences differ from one another, and what works for others may not work for us. Doubts and confusion are not uncommon, but they should not be the sole basis for making decisions about a potential spouse. Some individuals may have the experience of meeting their God-ordained spouse and instantly recognize that they're the one meant for them. However, this experience varies from each person. Some may feel certain that their potential partner is the one, while others may experience confusion and doubt. It's crucial to understand that God will reveal His actions to us and counsel us when we maintain a persistent and consistent relationship with Him. Confusion is not necessarily a bad thing, as it may be a sign that God's at work in the relationship. This is why God always points us to His Word. The Bible is a guidebook that provides us with wisdom and comfort in times of confusion. It says in 2 Timothy 3, 16-17, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Scripture is God-breathed and useful for every area of our needs. By immersing ourselves in God's Word, we can gain clarity and discernment in our relationships. Therefore, in the midst of our doubts, it's important to invite God into our decision-making process and allow Him to help you overcome that confusion. 2. We don't really know the person well. Another reason you may find yourself holding back or confused about your future spouse when they come may be because God wants you to get to know them well before you make that decision. Marital decisions aren't to be made by force or emotions, but by the facts before you and the clear direction of the Holy Spirit. As time goes on and we get to know our potential partner better, God can reveal their true character and attitudes. This revelation can help us discern whether the person is a suitable spouse for us. Remember what the Bible tells us in Matthew 7:16: By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? This verse reminds us that we can recognize people by their fruit their fruit refers to their characteristics, responses, and actions, which reflect a person's thoughts and personality. It's important to pay attention to their actions and behaviors, seeking alignment with biblical principles. When confusion arises, we can turn to prayer for guidance. By comparing our desires with what the Word of God says, we can seek confirmation and clarity. It's important to be open to God's guidance and not solely rely on our own understanding. You may say, but when I ask him about this person, he doesn't say anything. Does that mean I'm free to go ahead? Well, sometimes not hearing directly from God or being met with God's silence on an issue may indicate that we're seeking to satisfy our own desires rather than aligning with His will. God's silence may mean that He's spoken to you about it, but you're still insisting on your own desires. Dear Saint, it's essential to be aware of our own biases and tendencies to please ourselves over what Scripture says. 2 Timothy 4, 3-4 warns us about turning away from the truth and embracing myths to suit our desires. When we're confused about a potential spouse, it's important to seek God's direction rather than relying solely on our own desires and understanding. God allows this confusion to draw us to Him for clarity. 
You must understand that it's common to feel confused about a potential spouse and wonder if it's a sign from God. While faith can grant divine guidance, it doesn't always provide specific results or remove confusion. It's important to seek God's direction when doubts start creeping in. In a state of confusion, God can help you gain understanding and provide guidance. James 4.3 reminds us that wrong motives can hinder our ability to receive what we ask for. Approach God with sincerity, seeking His will, and aligning your desires with His purposes. Now, here's a note of warning. Some people walk around with a mindset that, well, if they're the right one for me, I don't have to pray about it. I'll just go with the flow and God will work it out. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but it won't work. Such a mindset is only setting you up for failure. Keeping quiet about your confusion will not yield answers. Instead, actively communicate with God and ask for His help. He's ready to assist you and attend to all that concerns you. When you're confused about your spouse, it may be an opportunity for you to draw closer to God and seek His wisdom in the matter. It's also very important to remember that God's plans unfold in His perfect timing, which may require patience on your part. While it may take time, rest assured that God will come through for you. Matthew 7 encourages us to ask, seek, and knock, inviting God to take control of our situations. Trust in His sovereignty and know that He knows the end from the beginning. Furthermore, there's also an issue of genuine interest in each other. In a healthy relationship, both you and your future spouse should show genuine interest and pursue each other. While there are no strict rules, it's genuinely beneficial for both parties to demonstrate a desire to know and understand each other. Pay attention to how they reciprocate your interest and seek counsel from others. A lack of interest or failure to seek advice may indicate a lack of investment in the relationship. In conclusion, it's important to maintain open communication with God through prayer and seek His guidance in matters of the heart. This involves staying focused on your feelings, desires, and inspirations, while also being patient and trusting in God. Also, cultivating a healthy mindset by engaging in social activities and building strong connections with others can all contribute to increasing the probability of meeting your future spouse. Remember, each person's journey is unique, and while it's normal to feel confusion or uncertainty, having faith and seeking God's guidance can provide comfort and direction along the way. If you found this video uplifting, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. God bless you.